So, uh, my post I made, um, <laughs> thankfully thus far has only had positive expressions on it. Um, I'm trying to figure out where to go next to try to explain because I've not done testing to verify whether I'm intersex, but honestly, that's not really people's business. A person can be trans without being intersex. It doesn't decrease the valid validity of their gender dysphoria just because they weren't born with certain parts. Something inside me is male. And medically speaking, something inside me is male enough to produce sickly male levels of testosterone so I'm considered to be medically male. Um, and again, I did get a second opinion on that. But I have not actually done the testing for whether I'm intersex because I'm terrified of it. Um, I don't think my medical information is necessarily people's business anyway. I think if I say medically I'm a boy and, and yes, I've gotten a second opinion and it, it's been verified by more than one doctor, um, that that should be it. No one else needs more information than that. What's more hard for me is how to express what this means to me, to people, and how much I feel because I have felt so many things. I mean... I lived six and a half years as a non-binary or whatever. I think it was six and a half. Um, you know, just going around androgynous and shit because I couldn't handle the original information that I have a hormone imbalance, like, going on. And I didn't want that to be something that overly affected everyone's lives. Because I was still extremely living to not inconvenience anyone. So, easiest thing is to kind of quietly be non-binary and no one really has to change anything. Um, I mean, I was already going by my nickname at that point, um, even before that, just because I couldn't stand being called my birth name anymore. And no one really, I, I didn't really come out as non-binary. No one really stopped thinking of me as a lesbian. It never changed anything. It never helped anything. It certainly didn't help me. <laughs> I was so busy trying to help everyone else feel less threatened that I didn't help myself at all. And I was terrified of actually accepting what was trying to be told to me. Even though it's what I wished for my entire life, that I was actually a boy. And even though a doctor's standing there telling me that I have male, you know, levels of testosterone and isn't that interesting and you know, so on and so forth and stuff. Maybe I, uh, you know, need to be tested for all these things and I didn't want to do any of the testing. And he's like, if you don't do anything, I'm just going to say you have PCOS. And it's like, okay, fine. And I just t was too terrified to absorb any of it. And then I spent years being too terrified of what everyone would think or how they would react or what they would do or how... They would feel to do anything, just like gripped by terror of it. I mean, at that point in my life, I was engaged to get married. Uh, at that point in my life, you know, I was still extremely much trying to conform to 
you know, everyone's wishes and standards and religious beliefs. And I was trying so hard to fit in, even though I did not fit in, even though I had been openly li living in quote unquote sin, I was trying to maintain enough of righteousness or whatever you want to call it to be able to see my nieces and nephews to be allowed to be part of the family to still not be shoved out and um I could not accept what was being told to me. I mean, it took over a year of just me considering how much it was torturing me to be non-binary and how much life was torturing me to live the way that I was living. And the girls constantly telling me I needed to go to therapy before I actually even would go to therapy. And then, you know, almost a year of therapy before I would start living as a man, even not around my family. Like, I, I was so terrified of accepting myself and just being okay with being me that it's taken me years. I've been so broken and indoctrinated and codependent that I kind of ruined my own life. And now I'm like, fuck it. You know, I'm standing up for myself. I'm doing this. You know, I'm done. I want to be happy for the rest of my life because I've been miserable and I'm, I'm done. I don't want to be miserable anymore. And all of the things that I was terrified of, terrified of being a man like I always wanted to be, terrified of, you know, what if I actually was a man? Like, and then terrified of what all of everyone, I, I lived for everyone else, did not live for myself. Terrified of what it would mean if I did. How selfish would that make me? How bad of a person would that make me? Is it even possible to be a good person and be a man, let alone be a man who let everyone down by becoming one? Like, people are terrible sometimes without meaning to be, and how they take advantage of the people who are giving. And I still want to be a giving person but not to the point of being taken advantage of. I don't want to live for other people. I want people who care about me in my life, and then if you don't care about me, I don't need you to agree with me all the time. I don't need it to be easy for you or whatever. It's fine if it takes a while, but I need you to care about me. My health matters. I'm the only one who lives with me all the time. My mental health matters. I don't know how to express that I'm not angry at anyone or trying to get someone to apologize for the way that I was miserable my whole life, but still somehow get across that I have been utterly, completely miserable and that I don't have to be, that there's an actual solution. I mean, how freaking many times in my life have I wished there was some sort of magic something you could take to cure depression? How many people who are depressed in the world wish there was something that they could do and it could possibly just magically fix their depression? Wouldn't that just be insane? And I have that option, and that's significant to me and I'm already feeling better than I was and that's significant to me like it is impactful to me how much just living more 
in male ways and just accepting what I want, only doing things that I want or I like. And not always is it male. I have made plenty of girl characters since I uh, started openly being a boy. It's not just like I've only made boy characters, but for the first time in my life, I feel secure enough to actually make a bear boy character. But the thing is, is girls are still pretty for me to look at. I still like looking at girls. But now I can make a character who looks like some badass dude that I would think would be awesome in a fantasy land too, and not feel like I'm a betrayer or a sinner or some sort of massive wads of guilt. But instead can just be like, hey, it's me if I was an elf. Hey, it's me if I was a Silvari. Like, hey, it's me if I was a Torrid. It's like, okay. For the first time in my life, it's okay. When I made a boy character before, years ago, in Guild Wars 2, like three years ago, it was, oh, he, this is just my little non-binary boy. Because I felt so insecure, I couldn't just say, you know what, I want to have a boy character. I was too freaking insecure to say that. So, poor little thing, a little Asura was a little boy who was non-binary. Because I was too scared, even in a, a very accepting of trans people guild, to say something more than that. I have spent my entire life looking for other people's acceptance, trying to do anything to convince them to care about me. And when I finally accepted that you can't convince people if they're not already convinced, I realized the only person that I've really been looking to accept me my whole life was me. That's why I'm not angry, even though it's frustrating that no one knew more about it or was more supportive of that I was different my whole life. In reality, what I'm more frustrated and angry by about is that I didn't accept me sooner. I knew I was different and I could never accept that. And mostly it was because I didn't know what was different. But at the same time, I have been absolutely cruel to myself. Maybe I should say that, I don't know. I feel a sense of progression about changing things on Facebook, which again, um, that was my first post on Facebook in four years. That shows how often I post on Facebook. I really, really don't post on Facebook a lot. Um, anyone who followed my pet name Facebook page is probably like, wow, did this person die? Is that why they stopped writing books and stopped, you know, having a Facebook? I, <laughs> like, um, I just, uh, <sighs> even when I played, uh, Final Fantasy 14, it was like, yes, I like looking at girls, but I was desperate to express more of my masculine side. So I ended up making a row just because I was like, this girl I can make look very much like a guy to certain degrees. And yeah, she still has boobs. And yeah, she's still pretty. But she also was very, she was very androgynous looking, my row. And it helped to express a little bit 
of masculinity, even if it was, oh, but this is still a girl. It was so helpful to at least have some sense of masculinity expression that that's been my entire life is me trying to sneak in little expressions of masculinity with my hair or with my behavior or with my baggy clothes or whatever it was um you know being interested in the things that i'm interested in didn't feel safe unless i was interested in them in them in a way that had some femininity attached or else being forced into certain boxes I couldn't survive it unless I attached a little bit of masculinity to it. And that's how I have survived my life, is by doing this. And in reality, it's like such, such a, a terrible thing to f position yourself under the table eating scraps like a dog, when in reality... You don't deserve that. And you're just getting tiny little scraps of yourself. And then the rest of yourself is shoved away somewhere under a table. Like, it, it's it's terrible to do that to yourself. If you're a person who's doing that to yourself and you're watching this, don't. Don't do it to yourself. Don't be like me. I don't know how to express any of that without making anyone feel guilty. But at the same time, I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty. I'm trying to express that this change is like not really a change because it was there the whole time. I just wouldn't accept it. And maybe... I mean, my girlfriend is a little more vindictive than me and kind of wants to rub it in people's faces and stuff. And maybe every once in a while I get this like thing where I'm like, they could take it to their grave that they didn't love me. But at the same time, I don't actually want that. What I actually want is just personal growth. Everyone else's growth is up to them. I want me to grow. And... In the end, that's what it's all about for me. Like, in the end, it's about me. It's like the first time in my life I've ever made everything about me in regards to any subject matter in my life, you, it's, I've always been the least important person in my own life, and I did that on purpose, and in this particular circumstance, I am not doing that, and it means I, I have things to figure out. But I'm glad that I have things to figure out and that I can step forward and be more the person I've always, always wished to be. I uh, got really effed up when I was a teenager. It was, um, I was clinically insane and miserable, absolutely miserable just completely broken and destroyed as a person. So messed up. And I didn't know what was wrong. I lived in a non-stop state of fear and disgust with myself and just non-stop self-loathing. <laughs> And had no idea why it had to be that way. And part of it was abuse. But the majority of it was just not knowing what was wrong with me. Which is strange because 
when people get abused, you would think that'd be the worst. But the worst thing that's been done in my life was things I did to myself. And I'm saying that with having a pedophile for a step-uncle. But my mother married. My fucking uncle. He's a pedophile. I'm saying it even despite that. The worst things that have ever been done to me in my life were done to me by me. I never accepted myself. I always thought it was wrong that I was different. And I never ever even once considered that maybe my being different was just okay. And that it was a good thing. And that my life could be good. I... always was so messed up when I was a teenager. But I got to a place where I was like, anything's better than this. Anything. I, I will just do something different than what I've been doing, and hopefully it will lead to something else, because anything's better than this. And I developed this image in my mind. There were a bunch of women that I looked up to who were women that I wished was my mom instead of my birth mother. And I wanted to be the kind of person that they would love. I wanted to be the kind of... I wanted to be the kind of kid that they would love, and I wanted to be the kind of boy that they would love. And I wanted them to want me. And I developed this image in my mind of a better version of myself. A version of myself that didn't lie, that didn't constantly destroy everything they touched, um, that wasn't constantly in pain, that wasn't constantly miserable and rejected and wrong somehow. And I've always strived to better myself and to be more like that image. And that image has changed over time. You know, I try that image became full blown perfect lesbian. In my twenties, that was basically the theme of my twenties is be a perfect lesbian. No, be a more perfect lesbian. No, you're still not being a perfect enough lesbian. Be a better lesbian. Like <laughs> like that was uh that was the theme of my twenties. Um but there were moral standards and there were uprightness standards and there were these things that I always expected of myself and I pursued being a better me. And honestly, for a very, very, very long time, I thought I was like a monster of a person and that I was a terrible human being that only hurt people and never did anything right. And I thought that for decades. And I finally got to the point where I began to accept I, I'm a good person and I deserve better treatment. And I began to accept that I, I was really close to the image, except the image still wasn't right. It didn't fit. But morally wise and upstanding person wise and goodness wise I was there I was all of the things that I had thought were impossible to achieve when I was a teenager and I knew what was wrong with the image at that point I just couldn't accept what was wrong with the image at that point because I was still trying to be a perfect lesbian so I, I made it androgynous. That was the best I could do. At that time, that was the most I could do. And it wasn't enough, but it eventually led me to now. 
And now, the image in my head, I feel like, is this back to being that boy that I wished for so long ago, except it's the man version. And I, I have the moral uprightness that I always wished I had. I have some of the things that I always wished was I had that was in that image. And I am getting closer to the other ones. And it's no longer a striving to be a better person. It's striving to be more myself at this point. Because the person in that image isn't so much better than me. I'm, I, I'm not actually feeling like I'm you know, striving to meet some higher standard of personhood. I, I, I feel like I've reached that. It's not that I'm a bad person at all. I don't need to strive to be a better person. I am a good person. Every single day I strive to be a good person. It's, it's that I don't look like myself. And I don't feel like myself. I feel pain and I feel misery even though I'm a good person. And I always thought when I was a teenager that if I could just be a good person that the pain would stop. That the depression might lift. And that's not true. You can't just better person your way into getting rid of dysthymia. That's not how it works. But accepting myself pursuing my own self instead of this pedestaled version of myself is helping me and the pedestaled version of myself looks like the self I'm pursuing right now just to be a good man for the rest of my life like it feels good to be at that point where I accept me, and I don't know how to express that in a little paragraph on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know how to express how much difference there is between the tortured, miserable person who lived for 35 years in absolute agony to the person who wants to live the rest of my life not that way. I, I don't know how to express that. Just how positive a change this is for me. To finally just accept me. And it's nice that there's been a mostly positive outpouring onto my post. It's nice of people to do that and... It's nice of the people who are like, oh, what's this bullshit, to not post something. Thank you for not posting. But at the same time, it's about me and what I want to say. And it's hard for me to nail down what I want to say. I just want to somehow find a way to convey how impactful it is for me personally to have an answer for what was wrong to have this real tangible chance at a happy rest of my life and to feel this much better already like how to get that across that's what I want to say I don't want to lash out at anyone, and I don't want to make anyone feel shitty. I just want to express how not shitty I finally feel after a lifetime of feeling shitty. And I want to say, I, I absolutely want to put it in my little paragraph on Facebook, um, that anyone who transitions, even though... They're not medically a boy. Anyone who transitions just, they have gender dysphoria and that's it. And 
they don't have necessarily a hormone imbalance or male parts or something going on with their body physically are just as validly trans and just as validly to be supported transitioning. I'm not more valid because there's a medical thing as much as I knew my whole life I knew and it is validating to know that I was right and I didn't know how to articulate it and no one else wanted it to be true but it was true and it was there and I I yeah, I find that very affirming. I don't find that, oh, this is the reason I should transition. The reason I should transition is my gender dysphoria. <laughs> Not because, oh, I happen to have something male going on inside my body. Even though the doctors, that's why, in their minds, I should transition. And the gender dysphoria. They think both. But in reality... I have always felt the need to pursue masculinity. I have always felt that very, very strongly. And I have always wished for it and wanted it and yearned for it and seen myself that way inside, internally. Um, in, I, I literally dream, and I'm, I'm a male in my dreams. And when I was a teenager, I would wake up and get on my knees and pray and beg for my soul because I would dream that I was a male and so I would have horrific nightmares I I first started having horrific nightmares when I was five and somehow I knew it wasn't okay I had all these dreams where I was being chased by terrible horrifying things hunted, persecuted, rejected, chased out. And I somehow knew that even as a child. And I didn't understand at all. I mean, how does a five-year-old express that I started having nightmares where I'm a man running away from sharks in the earth or massive cats while I'm in a lava tunnel or you know all these things where I wake up and I'm screaming and I'm crying and it just never stops my whole life until I'm 18 and a half literally from age 5 to 18 and a half I just had non-stop nightmares and very often just would not sleep and if I didn't have a nightmare I was a man who was enjoying myself being a man, which automatically meant I was a sinner and should pray for my soul, and so it was still a nightmare. There was no rest for me growing up, unless I slept during the day curled up in a fetal position, ruining my ankles and my lower back. But I just always knew something was not going to be acceptable to everyone else about me. Dreaming that I was a boy. I have hid so much of my life and led a double life my entire life. And I don't want to anymore. I want everyone to just know, hey, this is my life. Here you go. Straightforward. I'm not hiding anything. The only thing I might hide is just how graphic some of the content from my life has been, but I mean, I don't really like talking about that anyway to people. I mean, even on here, I don't go into gross detail when I say, oh, I was abused or, oh, you know, all these nightmares. I kind of picked the five-year-old nightmares instead of the teenager nightmares. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to go into gross detail about the crap. I want to go into gross detail about me.
and the future and possibility and progress and taking charge of my own self and accepting myself. How to express that in a freaking paragraph on Facebook.